I've been seeing all these videos come through all the hurricane damage in Florida. Man, it is horrible. It is crazy. I'm sure you've been seeing it too. My heart goes out to all my friends in Florida and man, it is just, it is just crazy all the devastation and I'm, and I've been praying for you guys and uh, I hope everybody's okay. So, uh, but yeah, it's been really, really crazy. So all the damage from the hurricanes and just the consistent uh, one after another storms. So I got to thinking about it. I'm like, man, I need to get on here and I need to, I need to do a video because I got to thinking about it. I'm like, what would I be doing in the same situation? Those of you that don't know, I have a F-150 Lightning uh, Lariat trim and extended range battery. Um, which is rated for about 320 miles if it's full. And those of you that have been watching my videos know that I've gotten a little bit more than that if you're driving in town and a little bit less than that if you're on the highway. So I just got to thinking about it. I'm like, man, what would I do in that scenario? I mean, would I be able to get out? How would the floodwaters impact the battery? Um, you know, what if the electricity's out and I'm not able to charge? And I just got to thinking about that. And uh, I've been seeing some other posts about literally that is what happened. A lot of electricity has gone out places. There's been a lot of floodwaters. And so I just got to thinking about it. What would, what would I do? And what would I advise people? Um, and frankly, I looked at all of the pluses and minuses comparing an EV to a regular gas vehicle and all the tests that I've done uh, from how long would it be able to sit there for a long time even in cold weather to range like in traffic and things like that and I actually think that I would rather have an EV in emergency situations like this and for two main reasons i'm not talking about in a scenario where i would just stay there i am not recommending that at all i feel bad for those of you that weren't uh able to get out i feel really bad that's uh that's crazy i am sorry for a lot of the crazy stuff happening and i just all the death and destruction and man so I, my heart goes out to you. I do not envy that situation at all. But so I am not talking about a scenario where my truck and I are stuck there, meaning basically floodwaters are coming in at several feet and things like that. I am not recommending that at all. But what I'm talking about is a scenario where electricity goes out, starting to have a little bit of bad weather, but trying to get out of town. Um, and so the first scenario is that if I'm trying to get out of town, if you take the scenario of gas versus electric and you say, and you compare it and you say, you're not able to get gas or you're not able to get electricity basically. And I'm like gas and gas or diesel versus electric in that situation, I would be thrilled to have an electric and here's why what's happening in those situations there's a lot of stop and go traffic if you've ever been in traffic it's kind of annoying it's great if you have blue cruise I, i'm using cruise control now it is awesome i love it but in that situation you know it's a lot of stop and go and it's a lot of idling people are uh, that have gas cars they're running out of gas that's it's crazy so and some people that may have electric maybe you would run out of electricity but i don't think so if they're actually charged up and here's the reason why whenever i'm at home usually i keep my truck charged up to about 90 percent my truck average range is about 320 miles so if my truck is at 90 percent now if i'm evacuating and i have a little bit more time i'm going to be charging it up to 100 percent That'll take me, it would take me just a couple hours, maybe four hours at the most at home to get it up from 90% to 100%, but I would do that if I had time. 
let's just say I'm stuck at 90% though, I'm still gonna get 275 miles. I can go pretty far on 275 miles. Usually that would be enough uh, to get out of a particular situation. Even if it doesn't seem like enough, the whole stop and go thing, man, EVs are made for that. My truck gets so much better range when I'm doing stop and go, going slower, and that's what you'd be doing. And so I would probably be getting well over the 275 uh, that I would need and get out of harm's way. Also, if I'm stuck and basically not going at all, idling is much better and much more efficient in EV versus gas. And you can look at on the description and actually see that in the video that I did where I was basically in negative nine degree weather and I stayed there for about six hours and tested how, how far my battery would go down. It only went down about a percent and a half every hour. And that's like using heater and a bad scenario or a tough scenario. So in this case, like we're talking about, you know, it could go for days if needed. Reason number two for preferring to have my Ford Lightning in a type of uh, emergency situation as, as what's happening in Florida like a hurricane is the Pro Power Onboard. You see, it's right here but the Pro Power onboard in a Ford Lightning is absolutely amazing. So I wanted to, just, just a fair warning though, you actually now with the 2024 and newer have to specify uh, that you want it. You have to choose it as an option. On the earlier models, you had two different options. I have the 9.6 kilowatt uh, version and the mega power front trunk version. So I basically got the uh, the largest power package that they offer. But yeah, it's right here. Check this out. But you can just take these and you plug it in right there. So you got four of them and there's a 240 volt here that you can actually charge you can actually charge another electric vehicle with. That's pretty cool. So the reason why I was excited about this, and I want to show you here, you can actually power a lot of stuff. Let me show you a little picture here. Recently, I did a pancake. I'm calling it front trunk pancakes. I have a special recipe and uh, has nothing to do with the front trunk, except that's where I cook it. But yeah, look here, you can see I'm cooking these pancakes in the front trunk and you can see the mega power front trunk. Basically there's four outlets there as well as a regular USB-C that you could just plug in your phone there in the front with you if you wanted to while you're cooking your pancakes. Anyways, if you look here, I was cooking the pancakes and then the, it, you can plug in a skillet there. It's using about 1400 watts, but then I also, I can show you this other picture here. I had two extension cords plugged into the back. There's basically three different breakers. The uh, front trunk and the cab run off of one. And then uh, there are two different ones back here. You have two sets of 120 volts that you can just plug in there with 20 amps or you have a 240 volt, 30 amp circuit right here in the back. And this is all together will use, whenever you're plugging in this, it will actually, it actually says here, if you see that 7.2 kilowatt max. So if you're plugging in this, you're probably not gonna be able to use those, but there's a whole separate outlet in the front. And the front trunk, if you see here, you actually have 120 volt, 20 amp circuit right here and it's 2.4 kilowatt max so that's where the 9.6 total comes from you have 420 volt outlets and two usb 
outlets right there. And then this amount here is shared by the plugs on the inside of the truck. So you have one here, and then you have a second option inside the cab right there. You can see I set up a couple of tables. I had some uh, friends of mine out helping me cook, but we cooked for my entire department uh, and like 50 people cooking a bunch of pancakes, bacon and eggs, and uh, lots of fun stuff. But basically, I, I plugged in two, two different outlets here, and it's not all positive. We, I, blew, I blew a breaker a couple of times, but what I discovered is they're about 1,400, 1,500 watts, uh, depending on the unit that I was using, and really, I can only plug in one of those to each thing, so really, you can probably run a little bit more than maybe one of those skillets off of each breaker, if you will. Uh, but it's still cooked. I, it was like great at cooking a bunch of stuff and uh, it didn't use that much power. We'll talk about that in a minute. This Ford also makes a hybrid version and in their gas, the last, they'll also put a pro power on there. But in this case, the reason why I thought it was better is that it's basically a big generator that's gonna last a whole lot longer than sitting there with a uh, tank of gas and basically your truck is having to idle and you're getting a bunch of exhaust uh, out there near where you're cooking if you're using the pro power back here. But where the EV is better is you have the front trunk and you saw that skillet where, you know, with the pancakes on it and you have the front trunk that you can cook it in. And I was actually making, like you can see the bowls there. I was making the pancakes in there, making the batter. I make them from scratch. Um, and I have a very special recipe, the best pancakes uh, that you would ever eat. And they are amazing. I got a lot of great comments, even from my coworkers. And uh, yeah, they're, it's, they're really good pancakes. You should try them. I'm actually thinking about doing this. I've had some suggestions from YouTube to start a membership thing, a Lightning Mike membership. And I'm thinking about doing that. One of the videos is I'll show you the recipe for, if you want to sign up here in a little bit, if you want to sign up to be a member, I'll give you the recipe for my front trunk pancakes. Do a video about that and you can make them, make them yourself Obviously, you don't have to do it in your front trunk, but it'll be fun. That'll be coming for anybody that wants to sign up to be a member of the channel. And I don't know much about it, but I thought it would be nice to give people extra little perks and the opportunity to support uh, me making more videos like this, showing all the great things about the Lightning. Anyways, back on this whole uh, pro power thing, that's one of the main reasons that I would rather have an EV, especially the Lightning, in a situation like uh, going through a hurricane where all the power is knocked out. You're basically able to power your house, a lot of things going on with your house for a long time, for several hours. I actually took a picture here. You can see that I started when I was cooking the pancakes. I started at 61% and then when I was done, after a few hours of cooking, I ended up with 57% of the battery. So you say that's 4%. Actually, that surprised me. I thought it was going to be less than that. But I think one of the things that impacted it is my truck actually got an update in the middle of it. Um, I thought that was kind of weird, but I guess because it was left on, Usually what you have to do is you have to leave your truck on. You can turn it on and lock it if you're going to be using this, but you do have to turn your truck on in order to use the Pro Power onboard. And then you go to the screen and you touch where you want to turn it on. And, uh, and you can, as you can see here, this, this is a picture where it shows you three different zones and it'll show you how much power I was pulling all at one time and uh, in order to do all of this breakfast. That was a lot of fun, by the way. So now back on the topic of the hurricane, and I know my heart really goes out to people. That is just crazy. 
the amount of devastation that's happening. But at the same time, that's why I was saying, I wonder what I would do. Well, I would be able to power my house if I was in an area where the electricity was out and there wasn't any flooding. Again, don't try to stay if there's going to be flooding. Leave, get out of there and go and use the example of what I was saying the first time. Get, get out of there. Make sure your truck is fully charged. Then get 300 miles away from from the danger zone and then you know find another charger in that area and charge it back up so get out of there if there's going to be flooding but if it's basically just the electricity going out a little bit of storm coming through then you'll be able to power your your house and a lot of things within your house with the truck now you don't have to have that setup where it plugs back into your house and everything that takes a very special setup you can actually just use extension cords and plug in fans or portable air conditioners and skillets for cooking uh, like I was showing you or you can get a space heater you can plug those in too uh, as long as the wattage is under what the limit is for each plug then you should be good so I'm just saying I really enjoy it again some of the gas models actually do have pro power on board uh, like the hybrid models and gas models but only out of the uh, the bed here which does give you plenty of power but the front trunk is where it really uh, makes the difference to me because you can do a whole lot of stuff in a front trunk there's so much that you can do with that i even have a little series of about 100 different 101 different ways that you can utilize your front trunk I still got little videos I'm going to be doing with that, but making pancakes, front trunk pancakes, that's awesome. So we do that. Anyways, I just wanted to post this video just, just to let you know that the Ford Lightning is one of, in my opinion, one of the best vehicles that you can have in preparing yourself for emergency situations, just like a hurricane or winter's going to be coming. Here in Colorado, there's random blizzards that show up, and it prepares you for that. So it's really good. Again, my heart goes out to all of you in Florida and the other southeastern states. I really appreciate everybody that's going down there helping, and that's you know in a state that might be close to Florida. And I really appreciate all the hard work. Man, there is a ton of like just hardworking everyday men and women that are going down there and supporting uh, people and rescuing people. Man, I am proud of you. Thank you for going out there and doing that and taking care of your fellow Americans. And that's what it's all about. People are helping each other out and that's, that is awesome. So again, I appreciate everybody that's out there helping and bringing supplies. And uh, I actually have heard of several lightnings uh, that their people are using their lightnings to power uh, to power up in situations like that their home and uh, helping out people that are in need so that is awesome what an awesome truck let me know in the comments if you've had situations where you've had to use power in a remote situation uh, or unique things like what I've done with the pancake uh, front trunk pancakes and cooking that breakfast and uh, appreciate you guys watching and I will see you on the next video.